From the BFG to the BFG 9000, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is um, actually. Joining us on today's episode, we have Teo Yang. Hello, I'm uh, very nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. We also have David Gallegos. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny Fernandez. More like yum, actually. Mm, mm. Yum, 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 yum. Well, uh, thank you uh, to all three of you for uh, for coming to play with us today. Teo, you've played once before. Mm -hmm. um, but we have two new contestants here, which yes. we'd love to see. The rules are extremely simple. Um, these are a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about the things that you know and love. Uh, it's up to you to find what is wrong, buzz in, and correct me. Uh, all your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually, sort of Jeopardy style. If you don't do that, I won't give you the point. Uh, and you can interrupt me at any point. As soon as you spot what's wrong, you can just buzz right in. Our first statement here is about uh, Venture Brothers. The original Hank and Dean Venture are killed at the end of season one in a drive-by shooting, constructed as an homage to the climactic scene of the film Easy Rider. Fortunately, the 16-year-old twin brothers are resurrected as clones at the beginning of season two. Um, actually? Yes. I just wanted to be the first one to <laughs> <laughs> hit the buzzer, because I have no idea what. Uh, Danny. Um, actually, it was an homage to Stanley Ipkiss' character in The Mask. <laughs> Man, people don't reference The Mask enough, uh, but no, that's Thank not Thank you. What, it, that's why I was brought on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is not what it was referencing. Uh, Oh, and Teo. Yeah. Um, but the incorrect thing is that it's referencing something? No, no, that is, it is a reference to, to Easy Rider. Okay, great. Then I will guess something <laughs> else then. Please do. Uh, actually, uh, the, the characters in season one were already clones. That's correct. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, uh, I, I said that they were the original Hank and Dean venture, but they weren't. Mm -hmm. um, they'd actually you find out later that they have died many, many times. And from the first wow. time we've mm -hmm. seen them, they've only ever been a rough copy of whatever the original, whoever the original ones were. I like this a lot because it, it feels like a good way to address the sort of like, the clone trope uh, in, in like sci-fi because like anytime you do that, it immediately, it's kind of like time travel where yes. it immediately becomes like, well, why aren't you doing that all the time? Like that feels like you can use that to solve a lot of things. And here's when it's like, we are, we literally are doing this all the time. <laughs> They're just constantly dying. That point will we'll go to Teo uh, and proving that you can totally guess your way into a right answer <laughs> oh, man. here. That was all impressive. Right. Yeah. Here's a Wonder Woman question. Wonder Woman first appeared in DC's All-Star Comics number 8 in 1941 and became the first widely recognized female superhero. As is typical of DC heroes, Wonder Woman has had many iterations and aliases, including these. Denana Truth Queen, Diana Trevor, Wonder Girl, Yellow Lantern, Goddess of Truth, Miss America, Star Sapphire, Wonder Tot, Amazon Aurora, Princess Diana, and Diana Prince. Yes, um, David. Actually, uh, this yellow... Uh, Yellow Lantern. Yeah. Is that, that's incorrect. Uh, that is correct. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's darn it. I know nothing about that uh, woman. Um, actually, is it um, Miss America? That she's never been Miss America? No, no. Dang it. She's my <laughs> Miss America. Um, actually, I'm going to go with Diana Prince. That was like a pop star or something at some point. Incorrect. Wow. That's her literal name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh. the most real one there is. Uh, the fake, uh, it is in that list, lot, long list of names. Okay. One of those is incorrect. Uh, the fake one is Amazon Aurora, which is a uh, is a, um, a feature offered by Amazon Web Services. I've used Amazon Aurora. <laughs> what? So you were actually familiar with Amazon Aurora, but didn't pick it out of the The, the words flew by. Uh, for sure, yeah. yeah. It, it was a lot. And, you know, she is an Amazon. It's mm -hmm. so, it, like, you, there could, you could make an argument for this, which is why. We chose it. Very tricky. After the success of Final Fantasy VII, Squaresoft released the next game in the Final Fantasy franchise, Final Fantasy VIII. And whereas Final Fantasy VII's protagonist was named Cloud and wielded his iconic giant buster sword, Final Fantasy VIII's protagonist was named Squall, and his signature weapon was a gun blade, a weapon that would also return in Final Fantasy XIII, wielded by a protagonist, Lightning. Um, um actually, ooh, uh, Lightning, I don't think that's his name at all. It is, yeah. It is? It is. I know nothing of Final Fantasy. <laughs> um, actually, it's a Keyblade, not a Gunblade? Uh, Keyblade is a Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts. Uh, so it is, it is a Gunblade. Gun I am a Disney baby. <laughs> um, actually, there was like a spin-off Final Fantasy game between 7 and 8. 
That's correct. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, do you know what it is? Um, between that. seven and eight, I'm gonna guess Final Fantasy Tactics. That's correct. Oh, oh my yes. god. Yes. That's Dang. a great game. Uh, that was a point for Teo. A point for Teo. We gotta, um, we're not doing it. I know, good. we gotta get him. We're gonna get him. Okay, what needs to be us first. <laughs> yes, better. <laughs> All right, our next question is a fan question. So this was submitted to us by someone who just watched the show. While many have worn the mantle, we first meet a Marvel superhero named Ghost Rider through the character of Johnny Blaze, a motorcyclist and stunt performer who is bonded to the demon Zarathos. Um, actually, uh, was it not Zarathos? It is Zarathos. It is Zarathos. Yeah. Um, actually, um, it's not so much bonded as more like he made a deal with the devil. <laughs> It's like a light agreement. Like a light well, let's agreement. not say bonded. Let's not, bring, let's not bring labels into this. Yeah, like, like no, no. what are we? Like, we're having fun here yeah. being like demon and ghost rider. Can't we just like keep that going? Right. It's an agreement, maybe. Uh, no, no. Uh, bonded. We're gonna say that bonded, bonded. is an okay, okay. Is an okay description of, of the of what whatever this relationship is. Are you gonna? Oh. Um. Actually, it's not Johnny Blaze. I think. It is Johnny Blaze. Damn it. You were a little close in, in, in guessing Johnny Blaze. What I was really going for was that he's not the first time that we meet uh, a oh. character named Ghost Rider. Uh, the first time we meet a character named Ghost Rider is not the Ghost Rider we know. Mm. It was a masked cowboy who was dressed all in white, um, who was very different from the Ghost Rider we know now, but was that was the first time a character named Ghost Rider that Sounds like a very appeared. scary type of writer. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I don't want to meet that Ghost It's Rider. funny you should mention that because uh, his name was later changed to Knight Rider, uh, but they changed that when they realized that that has certain uh, connotations within the KKK, and they're like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't keep this this way. Uh, so they changed it to Phantom Rider. Uh, <laughs> they changed it to Grand Wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit, we ran into more problems. We need to actually do research before we change the name again, okay? No points for that one, but that's okay. Wow. There's plenty more statements we're to come. We're doing good. I know, we're... This will bring us to our first shiny question Ooh. of the game. This is a game called Fictionary. I am going to give you the name of a monster or creature or something from folklore. It'll be up to you to draw it to the best of your ability. Oh, Lord. I won't be judging the quality of the drawing. Mm -hmm. It can be as shitty as Hell you want yeah. it to be. Um, but I will be looking for a couple of key features that sort of define the monster that I'm going to ask you to draw. Got it. Your creature that I would like you to draw for this Fictionary is the Sea Monk. The Sea Monk. There have been several different imaginings of what the sea monk might look like, but they have they all share a couple of features. If you get at least those things I'm looking for, well, I just might give you that point. Teo is capping his pen. <coughs> Why is he capping? In. Danny is oh. locking in her answer. And good. David. We peer pressured you. Very good. All right. Um, uh, the way we'll do this, we'll go like one at a time down the line. Just tell us a little bit about the sea monk, and then uh, once we've revealed them all, I'll, I'll say who uh, who got a point. Okay. Um, I have a strong idea of who the sea monk is. <laughs> um, it is a uh, Shaolin monk who lives in the sea. Um, you can see the little. Dots on his iconic dots on his head. I thought those were spider eyes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 I drew them very close to the eyes. Um, this is Buddha's hand, um, I, I, iconic image, uh, uh -huh. and he draws his powers from. Is um, he, this, it, yeah, it looks like he's not allowed to eat donuts, salt, or uh, maybe that is. Is that uh, some sort of male female symbol? Thank you, thank you. Yes, that's exactly what I was drawing. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, this is this is salt uh, or beer. <laughs> And this here is, uh, it looks like a catcher's mint, but I think I drew it as supposed to be meat. Got it, got it. Vegetarian, no alcohol, no sex. All right, uh, that is your seamonk. Very good. Uh, uh, David, let's take a look at um, your interpretation sea monk, of the seamonk. Correct? Yes, yeah. the sea monk. Uh, it's <laughs> a monk of the sea. Yep. Half of his body is that of a merman, <laughs> uh, so he can swim. He has no hands because he lives in the ocean. And uh, he pretty much looks like a monk to me. Uh -huh. Traditional beads. He looks yeah. like Will Smith's genie. <laughs> he does look like Will Smith's genie. He was my inspiration. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Danny, let's take a look at your sea well, monk. Mine is the sea monk when he transforms into the scary monster <laughs> of the sea. Um, he has all the features necessary to be qualified as an eyes. He also has a <laughs> mouth and he has two ears, just like the sea monk. Um, 
Yeah, this is um, him. He's kind of covered in algae and sludge. He might look like, I don't know, a ghost from Pac-Man or Darth Vader. <laughs> um, but I also added seabirds and seagulls. This is like a Pokemon. It, yeah, there's something kind of fun here, which is that, like, there are parts of your drawing that are not far off, and there are also parts of your drawing that are not far off. Teo, you're way off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Um, let's take a look at what the sea monk should look like. Um, oh, I, you know. there it is. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, think I, I did win. the Eastern represent. Uh, That's true. <laughs> interpretation so this of is, it. This is, you are correct. That is a sea monk. It is, but it is more of a, a uh, Western, uh, a Western, uh, Western monk rather than a, a, an, an Eastern monk. Would be pro beer. Would be very pro beer. Like boat, um, mouth, eyes, squigglies. You, you got the mouth, eyes, squigglies. Well, the, the thing two is, ears. sometimes sometimes they're interpreted as having sort of like a head, like a bishop's hat, which is kind of similar to this uh, this this weird blobby head that you have. <laughs> uh, and you have the arms that are like the, very the, similar to these fins. The, hairdo. They both have hairdos. They both have, they both have hairdos. Usually they have like a sort of monk tonsure that sort of like, you know. Uh, it's helmet shaped. Yeah. You have like the inverse of the correct hairstyle where it's like hair in the middle and nothing on the side. Uh, this is this is from like folklore or this is from like a yeah, TV Yeah, this show? is like you'll sometimes see it in like, um, uh, you'll, you'd see it on like maps like when they would draw like kind of here there'd be dragons. They, they'd have like sea monsters and things like that. Sometimes you'd see these sea monks also kind of like out in the ocean. Just like, hey, if you're a sailor and you're going exploring, just be careful because there's going to be some some so they're sea dangerous. Monks. They're dangerous creatures. I mean, they're they're dangerous. If, I don't know for sure. If I had to guess, I would say they probably try to drown you. That's what most or things in the sea. Convert you. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. That honest, honestly, probably more dangerous. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, the number of people killed by uh, evangelical by evangelical <laughs> by like Christian colonials versus uh, <laughs> fish. Probably more in the the former. The but. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's that. So now I'm trying to decide if I want to award anything for <laughs> for for this. This is. Uh, you said you you weren't going on based off of how good not, it was. I was yeah. not going on quality. That is close. Uh, this um, it's monk. Gosh. A monk. It, what? It, Mine it, is the sludge that is that man. Uh, the thing is, out of these three drawings here, there's really. I mean, come on. I, it's just I'm so usually, similar. I got I, the attributes right. I, the, uh, uh, I don't know if you. I, I bet helmet. he eats meat and beer. He probably does stay away from sex. I'm guessing. There's a stick figure, a Pokemon, and an actual rendition <laughs> of the that sea is monk. Will Smith. I'm sorry. <laughs> Will, Will Smith as the sea monk. I might say, David, that, that you have enough features that I'm looking for. You did go wow. for for uh, more of a, an Asian monk uh, than than, yeah. than a Western wow. monk. I think I'm going to give it to David, oh. uh, and we will go ahead and collect these boards. Will but Smith. I love all. All of these drawings, except for Teo's. Wow. <laughs> well, I said I would, and I did. I made a bunch of mistakes, and you caught them. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you. At Bloodle Poodle says, um, actually, Flowey's true name is Asriel Dreamer, and the flower is just Asriel without a soul. One point for you. At Nesk says, the year 1200 in Chrono Trigger should be 12,000 BC. We dropped off a zero and put it in the future. And from our exclusive Dropout Discord, BotBot94 says, um, actually, Orson Welles' last movie wasn't Transformers the Movie of 1986, but rather an independent film called Someone to Love, released in 1987. While that was his last movie, Movie, his last role was in Transformers the movie since he recorded that after Someone to Love. Conan the Barbarian creator Robert E. Howard sometimes references his friend H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu mythos in his work, like when Conan dreams of nameless old ones, a reference to the great old ones, also called elder things or gods. It's conceivable that Conan takes place in the same universe as Cthulhu, since it is set in the Chalcolithic Age, thousands of years before most of Lovecraft's stories take place. Um, David. Actually, I don't think H.P. Lovecraft was friends with that other guy. They actually were. The yeah, the creator. Frenemies? Of, no, good friend. They were like pen pals. They I like uh, they uh, uh, they no. were they were they were buds. Yeah. A lot of male friendship. It's hard to tell. It's true. Anything <laughs> okay. vast underneath. I give you that. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Maybe they were in love. Maybe it wasn't friends. Maybe they were just in love. That's true. We're just gonna, like we'll we'll <laughs> we'll award you the point because we've questioned the very very relationship of. Uh, 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 but no, no. Yes. Um, actually, the time period that Conan takes place is not thousands of years before H.P. Lovecraft. At most, at most, it's like 
a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of Lovecraft's stories are sort of set in like kind of modern day or like 18. the time that he was writing. Uh, and uh, and so no, the the Conan the Barbarian stories were like years and years and years before. Um, actually, he doesn't prefer to be called barbarian anymore. He prefers to be called pre-civilized. Uh, pre-civilized. <laughs> oh, that's a great answer, but no. Are we sure? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going I'm to call this one and say Noah got this one. Um, uh, Conan takes place during the Hyborian Age. <laughs> um, of course. Um, which is a, a, a fictional era. Some sort of like, just sort of, Vaguely defined period right. where just stuff was happening. Like Game of Thrones, you know, it's like we yes. just have, we still have like wagons, but also dragons. Yeah, exactly. But that is true that that uh, he did incorporate um, stuff from H.P. Lovecraft uh, into there. It, again, as a sort of, it's like, look, we're taking place in a time when anything could sort of happen. So sure, why can't there be sleeping horrific monsters that just sort of like take place, that are just sort of gods at this time, and that's just... It's all part of it. They had a lovely bromance. A lovely bromance. Aww. Yeah, they were like longtime pen pals. Um, uh, I don't know a whole lot of the details. There's of the something thing, there. We'll, well, we will move on to our next uh, next statement here, which is another video game question. Look, not everyone's parents let them have a Nintendo. Some folks were only allowed to play educational games on their computer, like Reader Rabbit, Math Blaster, Rainbow Islands, and Super Munchers, Mario is Missing, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, Treasure Mountain, and Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing. Um, actually, uh, that Mario game is an educational? It is, weird. What? Weirdly, right? <laughs> it's a weird Mario educational game for your computer. It teaches you about like geography and like countries and stuff? I, I could I not tell you what this sure. game is about, but we can get, get that information and uh, and then let you know. Mario is missing. That's a good guess. Uh, Mario's missing was probably some sort of geo. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Rainbow Island is not educational or it's not a game. <laughs> It's not, it's not, what do you say? It does not belong in this list. <laughs> and why doesn't it belong in the list? Um, it's not a game or it's not educational. <laughs> Which one, Teo? Uh, you we'll go to... with it's not a game. Uh, Rainbow Islands is a game. Oh. <laughs> Danny. Um, actually, Rainbow Island isn't educational. That's correct. Yes. Oh, I've been scooped! <laughs> Rainbow Islands is the sequel to Bubble Bobble. Um, uh, <laughs> do we have any... Uh... Mario's Missing is a little Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Mm. Mm. Did you play Mario's Missing? Did you know no. that? Or were you just guessing based on the title? I think I've seen videos of it to fall asleep. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've watched, probably watched videos of like, you know, Mar off brand Mario game retrospectives, <laughs> and I've used it to fall asleep. So you're just like, wow. oh, I'm tired. Mario's missing. And yeah. I go like this, and then I have my phone in right in front of me. How often do you drop your phone on your face when you're trying to fall Multiple asleep? times. <laughs> and also, I drop my phone cause, just because it's big, <laughs> it slips out of my hands. That's so much nicer than me. I normally put on like SVU and it's like people being murdered and that like takes me to bed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have a very nerdy person going like, well, here are all the Mario games you haven't heard of. <laughs> have you, do you feel like it affects your dreams? I, uh, I guess either of you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. It makes me dream nice things. Except for the fact that Mario's missing. You can't that's, find that's him. That's true. Yeah. But then Luigi gets to be the star for once, you know? He has Luigi's He's haunted, man. whatever the hell. Haunted, haunted, haunted Mansion. Yeah. yeah. I do want to note that Mario's Missing is actually the first time that Luigi got to be the protagonist of one of the Mario games. As he should. He's like the best wingman for Mario. He's always yeah. propping Mario up. Yes. He, yeah, he does a lot and he doesn't ask a whole lot in return. I know. Uh, Luigi, favored character by younger siblings everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danny, scooping that point, uh, that'll be for you. Thanks, I got on the board. <laughs> nice. You know, if you're like me, you're working too much and too hard. Sometimes you're working so much that you only stop for dinner when you're so hungry you can barely think anymore. That's when it's great to have HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you'll get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and delicious seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh can cover all your meals. And, you know, if you want to sneak a little snack or a special treat in between there, you can do that too with options from the HelloFresh market. Every recipe is designed by professional chefs and nutrition experts to ensure that these recipes are as tasty to eat as they are easy to prepare. And if you're trying to save money, HelloFresh is a great option. It's 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a typical restaurant meal, all without sacrificing restaurant quality food. Go to HelloFresh.com actually14 and use the code actually14 and you'll get 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's right, free food, 14 free meals, plus free shipping just by going to HelloFresh.com slash actually14 and using the code actually14. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit.
Here's a question about Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, boy. Alchemy follows a fundamental principle called equivalent exchange, made up of two fictional scientific laws. The law of natural providence states that a material can only be transformed into something else with the same basic physical composition. The law of human transmutation forbids using alchemy to transmute people or their souls. Um, actually, you can transmute people. You can, yeah. Uh, it's not. It's, it is not a law that you can't do it. It's just sort of a social moray that you should not do taboo. that. Yeah, it's a it's a taboo, but it's not a sort of law of the way alchemy works. Um, the other law is the law uh, uh, is is the law of conservation of mass, which is also just happens to be a real physical law um, that just also happens to work uh, with alchemy, uh, which is that you know you can't increase or decrease the mass of the thing that you are transforming via alchemy. That's a point for Danny. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and this will bring us to our second shiny question. This is a game that we call Acronym B. This will work a little bit like a spelling bee and that rather than, we'll kind of like move down the line rather than having like one thing that everyone is answering. So in just a moment on the screen here, there's going to be a series of acronyms. Um, and it'll be up to you to tell me what they stand for. Um, so we'll, we'll start with Teo. We'll kind of move down the line. We'll keep going as long as people are getting them right. Mm. If someone gets one wrong, then that one will move on to the next person to try to answer correctly. This particular acronym B is all about online gaming terminology. So uh, let's load up that first one. Teo, what does Ooh. it stand for? Uh, massively multiplayer online RPG. A role-playing game. Great. Uh, very good. David. Downloadable content. Correct. Danny. Oh, no. Um, boy band. I know. Oh, that's so funny. I am not, I don't play games online. Oh, no. It's oh. cool. I have my own games. I have my N64 still <laughs> in my heart um, and still connected to my TV. Um, uh, I don't, left friend game. <laughs> uh, that, that is incorrect. Uh, Teo, do you know this one? Uh, looking for group. That is looking for group. Uh, player versus player. All right, we'll jump. Uh, we'll jump back to Teo. Oh, that, uh, what? No, I can't get this one. <laughs> you're, you're, you're out of the B. Oh, I'm out. Uh, you're, you're, you're out once you get. Once oh, you get I didn't wrong. know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you're out. When we'll we'll keep I was whittling like, what? it down. No, I know this uh, one. Okay, never mind. I'm out. Um, okay. Uh, Teo. Uh, Non-playable character. That's cl close enough. Um, uh, uh, David. Oof. Um, can I say that on? <laughs> but what, what do you think is the answer? <laughs> uh, like we didn't D. put anything offensive in here. I hope not. That is a D, right? DPS? That is DPS. Don't know it. You want to so, take, a, take a stab? Dude prone sauce. <laughs> it is I not dude know. prone sauce. <laughs> nice. uh, Teo, do you know this one? Uh... Uh, damage per second. It is damage Ooh, per second. Damn. Um, all right, that will make uh, Teo the winner, but um, we've got a couple. Teo, do you want to just see if you yeah, can rack I'll up keep these going. other ones? Uh, area of effect. Uh huh. Ooh, uh, out of mana. Yep. Uh, free to play. Uh huh. Damage over time. That's correct. That's all we got left. <laughs> Uh, that point will go to Teo. Thank God, all the time I was spent playing World of Warcraft amounts to something. <laughs> <laughs> they said it wouldn't count for anything, and in fact, it got you one point in the game that awards you absolutely nothing. Yes. <laughs> hey, look, I'll make mistakes, I'll say wrong things, and you can tell me about it. If you want to correct me, you can tweet at um actually show or go to our exclusive Dropout Discord and correct me there. If we like what you have to say, we might feature it in a future episode. Next question is about Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. Oh, boy. Dr. Horrible has used his doctorate in engineering to build a variety of evil inventions, including a transmatter ray for stealing gold from a vault, a freeze ray that can stop time, and a death ray that would probably kill someone, but it malfunctions, so we never know for sure. Um, David. actually, there's no freeze ray that stops time. There is a freeze ray that stops what? time. What? Um, actually, his doctorate isn't in engineering. That's correct. Wow. What? Uh, do you know what it? Do you know what it's in? Um, is it in chemistry? It's not. But I'll, or... I'll give you the point unless okay. someone else can can tell me what his doctorate is in. Doctorate in evil? Uh, no. <laughs> but 
You're shockingly close. Yeah. Uh, I'm, still gonna, I'm still gonna give it evil. I'm still gonna give it to Danny. Yeah, Doctor Evil has a doctorate in evil. Doctor Horrible has a, a PhD in horribleness. <laughs> Which wow, what? you were so extremely close. close. Uh, that, um, I've been robbed. Uh, <laughs> you saw this. If you had come in first with that, um, I probably would have given it to you. But the fact that you were trying to scoop Danny, yeah. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that for that point for Danny. Um, not not a doctorate in engineering at all. Horribleness. Um, but yeah. Same. Right? Am I right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, fine. Whatever you want to say. Look, I know it's a fictional thing, but it's it's kind of weird if your last name is horrible and then you also go on to get your degree in horribleness. Like, that's <laughs> that's a nice, like, convenient sort of, you know, you, you found the job that was perfect for you. And that's great. This next question is about the Twilight Zone. Oh. In Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up, two state troopers detain a group of seven bus passengers and their driver at a diner, suspecting one of them is an alien in disguise. The investigation yields no results, though, and eventually they all leave, and soon thereafter are killed when a bridge collapses, and it is revealed that Haley, the diner's cook, was the Martian all along. Um, actually, Damn. they're not all killed uh, on the bridge. Ooh, well, you know, <laughs> that wasn't what we were going for, but that's technically correct. So I'm going to allow it. Oh, I haven't uh, seen that episode in so long, um, but yet. Uh, yeah, the uh, there is there is something else that that is wrong here, but but um, but in fact, yeah, one of the one of the folks in the diner uh, does come back and is sort of like, oh, everyone went over and like they all died, but um, but that person doesn't. Can do you, can you spot the other thing that's wrong? It wasn't two state troopers. No, 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 there were two state troopers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... Um, actually, Haley wasn't the one. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. She wasn't the Martian? No, it was a he. It's he. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a he. Oh. D we, uh, last he thing, yeah. Wasn't the uh, Martian. He is not the Martian. Um, it is it's a patron there. It's a patron. It's, it is, it yeah. is the passenger who comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The passenger is the Martian, but it's revealed that that the uh, that Haley is a is from Venus. Uh, so they're both aliens, yeah. but he sort of reveal he takes off his cap and shows like a sort of like big fake looking third eye. It's like painted on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's this, like real like rubbery looking. It's like, uh -huh, yeah. did you see this? So what you're saying is I was correct. No. Uh, you are correct, but I already said I was going to give that point to Danny. Right. Get two points. You could share. <laughs> yeah, so Haley, not the Martian. Uh, another one did survive. It was the Martian who survived. Well, we'll move on to our next question, which is our last shiny question of the game. Oh. This is a game we're calling Find the Fake. So on the other side of this card, um, there's going to be six images. Five of these are... Uh, real Superman villains, um, real real villains that have been featured in Superman comics. One of them is something that we just made up and uh, commissioned an artist to draw. Uh, so it's up to you to identify which one is fake. First person who can identify the fake one will get the point. So buzzers at the ready and flip. Tell me what the fake one is. Which one is fake? <laughs> uh, Danny. Is it, it's. The rainbow dude. Uh, down here in the lower left? Yeah. That is incorrect. No! Uh, David. A horse guy with, I mean, horse with the cowboy. <laughs> uh, that is also incorrect. Teo. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, the in the middle in the green the pickup artist in the um, <laughs> the pickup artist in, in, the green, <laughs> in the green suit mystery the pickup <laughs> artist here's the thing you need nope that is oh, also a real Superman no. was that me uh, oh, actually yeah. um. Regular guy on the bottom. Uh, right. just, just this, uh, this the regular like hipster guy. businessman? Yeah. Nope, no. that is also a real... Oh, Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. It's Mayo Man. Uh, it's the Mayo dude. The, the... That he just looks like if a can of mayonnaise came to life. <laughs> it's like, I squirt mayo out of my armpits. Uh, um, uh, that is also no! incorrect. I'm actually... I'm actually uh, uh, the Joker, that guy on the far right with uh, the wait. crown, Burger King guy. It's... It's truly the only one left. <laughs> uh, we've guessed all the other ones. But I clicked it uh, and so I said So you clicked it. it first. I'm going to, uh, to allow it. Um, I should have known. Uh, that That is a character we have named the Candy King, uh, but that is not a real Superman villain. That's just something that seems sort of... Um, Who is the yellow guy? That is Microwave Man. Oh. Uh, microwave Damn. Man. Of course. Um, Mayo. <laughs> Ma Ma Mayo Man. <laughs> Mayo and Microwave Man do not get along at all. <laughs> we have Microwave Man. This is the Rainbow Raider. The Puzzler is the Puzzler, the one on the lower right? I'm sure it's the top. Oh, I don't know really? why He's this guy the is the Puzzler? puzzler. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe he's he like a is crossword puzzler. Well, just every Sunday uh, at, at lunchtime, I do my crossword puzzle, and that's just... I don't know why Superman hates me. He just <laughs> does. In, in the top middle is Toy Man, and uh, the bottom middle down here is Terra Man. By pure process of elimination, uh, that goes to uh, David. Um, but I like to allow it on these ones because nothing makes me happier than when the last one guessed is the fake one. <laughs> I'm looking up more stuff about the puzzler, and the most climactic things I can find seems to be multiple sequences in which he plays Superman in checkers. Man, that's not even a puzzle. That, that, um, <laughs> that's a game. Uh, you know, th not all villains have to be, like, destroying the world. They could just want to beat Superman in checkers, you know? They just feels... dest he destroys his self-esteem. So that's it's even a, worse. It's, a, it's an emotional war that he's waging yeah. on, uh, on Superman. It feels like you shouldn't get to say you're a supervillain if you just want to, like, occasionally <laughs> beat Superman in checkers. Um, he's dangerously good. Uh, well, this, this will bring us to our last question of the game. <laughs> Our last question, as always, concerns real-life skills. So nothing to do mm. with the things we've been talking about, just something that might be valuable for you in your day-to-day -day life. It's time to learn to do your laundry. Generally, hot water is best for whites and cold is best for colors, though the colder the water, the harder it generally is to remove stains. For cotton clothes, jeans, and linens, a normal wash is usually okay. The delicate cycle is good for lace items and soft sweaters, and the permanent press cycle helps prevent damage to stretchy fabrics like spandex, lycra, and elastine. Um, actually, that statement sounds true. <laughs> well, despite whether or not it sounds true, there's something wrong about it. Um, actually, you should hand wash lace. <laughs> I honestly had that thought, too. I mean, you could hand wash lace, but you could maybe get away with uh, having it in the delicate cycle as well. I like that you like looked out to camera, though. It's being like, right? Huh? Huh? Everyone? I was with you. <laughs> That's probably more correct, but uh, the delicate cycle yes. exists. Um, yes, David. Actually, the permanent press does not... Um, uh, Whatever you said. Do the, do the thing I said. Yes. <laughs> well, Obviously, no one does their laundry here. We're all just well, like, yeah, uh, That is correct. Um, uh, the permanent press is, is, should not be used for stretchy fabrics. Um, uh, it's a medium heat, low tumble setting uh, for fabrics for that where you're trying to get the wrinkles out of them. Um, uh, and in fact, I think that can be damaging to things like spandex. So you don't want to use the permanent press for, the, for oh, those there. things. We learn something what, new every day. Know. That makes our final score... Three, three, four, which makes Danny our winner for oh, this. Oh, really? Episode. I was looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I was like, congratulations. Yeah, I was looking at you. Oh, shoot. Uh, <laughs> that was, I was an looking accident. at me. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, the game is unpredictable. The, the points, they are, they're dirty sometimes. People guess their way into answers, but hey, that's the way the, the game goes. Uh, so, four points for Danny, making you our winner wow. for this episode. Uh, uh, David and Teo tied for second place with three points each. A boom that's it for this episode. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually.